I just unmuted. Sorry, friends. Welcome to worship. We're glad to have you here today, and on the second Sunday of Advent, we are focusing on the gift of peace that comes through Christ Jesus, our Lord, at this Christmas season, and we're also laying a firm foundation upon which our homes and lives can welcome in our Lord at Christmas. If you are worshiping in person with us, thanks for finding your way down Highland Road. I got the fog cleared out earlier, so you'd be able to see your way here, and if you are in person, if you would take just a minute to let us know you're here by scanning the QR code and sitting in front of you on the pew with your smartphone. You choose the camera app and it'll open and do magical things for you so that we can know you're here. And if you're a guest of ours, I would love to be able to connect with you in the days to come this week. There are so many ways in which we can celebrate and, and live through this Advent season together. And one of those ways is right now in worship. And so I invite you to lay aside the busyness and the to-do list that you may be carrying. Set down the, the hectic pace that you may be living right now and breathe in the grace of God. Allow that peace, the peace of Christ, that maybe we don't fully understand, but thanks be to God is with us, to come upon you now. We are so glad to see you in worship we welcome you now, and so I invite you to settle in and allow this time to be a time for you and God to reconnect. Welcome to worship. We're going to sing together now our hymn of praise, the hymn of promise. The lighting of the Advent candle. Sorry, y'all. I switched pockets today. And so my whole hand and system is out of whack. Where I put my microphone, I mean. Okay, so I will get better at that. Let's breathe again. Let's refocus. <laughs> So this morning, as we light our Advent candles, we light the candle of peace. And one of the traditions that has come to be a part of our Advent season is to invite newer members of the church to light our candles each week. And so today, I invite Fred and Becky Shearer to come and light our Advent candles and lead us in our litany. There'll be a sung response that we'll all sing together afterward. Good morning. Good morning. Peace be with you. Please join us responsively in the candle lighting prayer litany. The home we long for is built on the foundation of love, Jesus as our cornerstone. The home we hope for 
is a home that knows peace. A peace at the core of our being. A peace that calms our anxiety. A peace amidst our relationships. A peace amidst down the street and around the world. The home we long for is a home that knows peace. So today we light the candle of peace as a reminder and as a prayer. Let us give thanks for a foundation of love as together we build a home of peace. We are close to home. Thanks be to God. Amen. As we light the candle of peace, we await the Christ yet to come, seeking peace within and around us, to a world with fear overgrown. Christ comes to Thank you, Fred and Becky. And at this time, I'm going to invite Molly Means to come up and all of the kids who are here to come forward for our children's moment. Uh, we also welcome families that are worshiping online to come and gather around. If you've got kids in the house, we'd love to have them be a part of this time of worship this day and always. So come forward. Yes. Just slide it on up. Good morning. Hey, good to see you. Hello. Hello. We're working on mics three and four. Hello. I just talk really loud. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay. Hi, guys. So our theme this Sunday made me think about building. So we're going to talk about building a house. So if I want to build a house, where do I start? What do I need to do first? Foundation. What else? What do you think? Oh, y'all, everybody knows more about building than I thought you would, and I love it. Yeah, absolutely. So what we had up here, use a blueprint. Ah, there you go. You got a cheat sheet. So <laughs> you went to, you already heard this, huh? So the first thing that we need if we are going to build a house is a blueprint. So this is an example. This is our plan for our kitchen renovations. So this one was made on a computer. They make them on a computer now. But they are called blueprints because they used to be made on a special blue paper. And you can see this talks about exactly what we want to do. They made a plan so they don't just get in there, start tearing stuff down and, you know, make it look cute. They know exactly what they want to do. We have the plans. We order the materials. So the first thing you have to do is make a blueprint. The second thing you have to do, which Evie said, is you have to have a foundation. So we're going to talk about a foundation. A foundation is where you build your house. It's the space, it's what it's on top of. So I got a couple things from home, just random stuff. I've got a box <laughs> and a bag of cotton. You know, you could do this, Abigail. <laughs> so I brought some blocks. Which one do you think is gonna be a better foundation for a tower of blocks? You think the box? What do you think, Anna? <laughs> yeah, you know, because you watch. <laughs> So if I'm going to make a tower of blocks, do you think it's going to make, I'm going to be able to make a taller tower on the box or on top of the cotton? On top of the box? Well, let's check it and see. So here are my blocks. Oh, we're not doing too bad here. Oh, oh, oh okay. How many did I get, Anna? Four. Four. Three, yeah, the fourth one doesn't count. You're right, because I made it fall over. Let's try it on the box. 
three, four. Four. This is my last one. Five. five. Do you think I could have added more? Yeah. So what's the difference? Why did we, why could we make a taller tower on this side? This one's squishy, yeah. This one's flat. It's hard. It doesn't move around. It's a solid foundation. So our... Hmm? Solid shapes, absolutely. So our theme this Sunday is setting a foundation. And just like when you're getting ready to build, we are looking forward. We're getting ready for something to happen on Christmas. What happens on Christmas? Who comes? Santa, absolutely, but also Jesus. You have to do things to get ready for both of those things. But when we're thinking about Jesus coming, there are a lot of things that God did to get the world ready for Jesus coming. So today you're going to hear a story about John the Baptist who helped set the stage, to help lay the foundation for Jesus to come. And there's another way that we can get ourselves ready, get our hearts ready for Jesus to come. So Pastor Lane's going to tell us about our Advent cal calendar that looks like a blueprint. Right. We have a blueprint to send you and all our families home with today that has a, is a daily Advent calendar for you to prepare your family and your heart and your life and your mind for the day of Christmas. So after we pray, I'll send you home with one of these blueprint plans. If anybody else has uh, ch children or younger ones in your household and you, or family and you want to share one, please do. We'll have them after worship. Okay. Okay. You guys ready to pray? Yes, let's pray. Just repeat after me. Dear Lord. Dear Lord. Thank you for all you do. Thank you for all you do. To prepare us for the coming of Jesus. To prepare us for the coming of Jesus. Help us to hear your word. Help us to hear your word. And make our hearts ready. And make our hearts ready. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Molly. Thanks, Anna. Here, would you want to take a blueprint? All right. You want to share? We are happy to have you. Have more than... Thanks, Abdel. See you later. Thanks, Molly. Good morning, everyone. As we prepare to hear the word of the Lord, let's unite our voices in our prayer for illumination. God, who speaks a good news language, we admit listening has never been our greatest gift. We are easily distracted. Our minds run a million miles a minute. We doubt your faith in us and take the easy way out when it comes to hope. So today we bow our heads and ask for help. Settle our hearts, quiet our minds, steady our breathing. Help us to rest in you. Help us to listen for your good news. Gratefully we pray, amen. In today's reading, John the Baptist comes proclaiming, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. And yes, you know the tune, and yes, you can sing it with me. Prepare ye the way of the Lord again. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Prepare ye the way. And you've all just passed the audition for the choir this meeting Wednesday night, <laughs> 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock. You know, just, just come as you are. You're fine. It's great. So in, in John the Baptist, we see a glimpse of what is yet to come. Lay a strong foundation in God and prepare the way home so that Christ might be able to enter in. In this second week of Advent, we focus on making space in our lives and our imagination for God's presence to break forth. Please stand if you're comfortable for the reading of the gospel. From the gospel of Luke chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. In the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, 
and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Ituria, and Trachonitis, and Lysanias, ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas. The word of God came to John, son of Zechariah in the wilderness. He went into all the region around Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thank be to God. to God. You may be seated. Thank you, Steve. Love making beautiful music and making a joyful noise with some of you. It was lovely to share in a time together. I'm going to offer a prayer for us now. Will you pray with me? Oh God, light the dark corners of our minds. Warm the cold places in our hearts. Fill the empty chambers of our spirits and heal the brokenness in our lives. Amen. Today marks the second Sunday of Advent. We are here in this season of preparation and of waiting, a season that calls upon us to practice patience, which is not my greatest virtue, and a season of listening as well. It's also a season where we rejoice that there are miracles that have already happened around us and that there are miracles yet to come, and God is working to make all things new. The church calendar also invites us to slow down a little bit between these last few weeks of the year as we remember that while the joy of Christmas is yet to come, and it is exciting, this present time of preparation is just as important. It's just as holy. It is filled with a sense of awe and wonder and blessing all on its own. So we're journeying together over these weeks pre leading up to Christmas in a series called Close to Home as we look at those traditional readings from the lectionary that invite us to draw close to God and to invite God to come close into our homes too. And it's a season that captures the idea that just before the birth of Christ, the Israel people, too, were longing for God to make a home with them and to be in the presence of God. In fact, they were waiting for centuries for the prophecy that Isaiah spoke of to be fulfilled, that a child would be born, a son given, as it was foretold, and the government would rest upon his shoulders and he would be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Sound familiar? We read those words many times in this season. And for the Israelites, God's people, they were longing to be home in a state of peace, freedom, and prosperity. And for them, the sense of being home in the presence of God and being home in their own land, operating as their own sovereign state, was one and the same. And, and while we don't know that kind of longing for the sovereignty as a nation, we can connect with Israel's longing for home. Because we too long to be in the presence of God, to experience God's presence in our lives, to see God's healing and redemption take place, to be filled with God's hope and to be able to offer that hope to someone else especially in the face of tragedy and the difficult circumstances that we read about every day happening in the world and even in our very lives. They longed, like we too, to be filled with God's peace in a season of chaos and turmoil. And so we turn the calendar into Advent, and Advent reminds us that God is here and God is still coming that God has done great things already, and God is still yet going to do many more great things. That while we all long for home, 
There's still preparation to be done before the true beauty of the home God has in mind for us is fully realized in us and for the world. So last Sunday, we started out the season by talking about the feeling of homesick, to long for something that it's not necessarily like a geographical location, but more of a longing as a state of being, physically, mentally, emotionally, that we want to feel at home and at peace in the world. And Advent reminds us that our true home is with God and that we have work to do here to create the kind of peace-filled home that we so desperately long for. And so this week, we're going to move from that feeling of homesickness to a sense of preparation for that, actively preparing a way home for ourselves and others by laying a foundation for that home that we long to live in. So on that very first Advent, that very first season when the waiting for the Messiah had happened and the Savior for Israel was coming into the world, they didn't have just four weeks to wait and prepare and hope for. It was more like 400 years of waiting. And after lots of war and displacement, the Israelites' longing for home had gotten so big that they had this hope for what God was going to do with them. And there would be a home with God and a home back at their own land in Israel. And they prayed for that and waited. And then they waited and they prayed. And and finally, when the time came for their prayers to be answered, they received a message. But it wasn't the kind of message that they were expecting or hoping for. It wasn't, great job, guys. You've prayed and waited, and now you're ready to be taken home. No, it wasn't like that, was it? Instead, they heard the message of prepare. Prepare the way for the Lord. As it was written in the book of the words Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Every valley will be filled. All the mountains will, and hills will be made low. And the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. So they were told to keep getting ready, to prepare themselves for God's salvation to come, because they weren't quite ready for the kind of home that God had been dreaming up for them. I don't know if we're ready quite yet for the kind of home that God has been dreaming for us today. And so first God sends this messenger, a harbinger that comes in earlier to them through the prophet John. John the Baptist, we know him. And he's the son of Zechariah, the priest, and this and the a son of Elizabeth, who was Mary's cousin, who I think as the soon future auntie of Jesus. Well, now growing up, John the Baptist would have called the Judean desert home, and his home life was within the community of the Essenes. It was a monastic community considered one of the three major sects of Judaism. During Jesus' day, there were the Pharisees and the Sadducees and then the Essenes, and they were strict observers of of monastic law, and at some point in John's childhood, between childhood and adulthood, John left home. Because he was to become that voice calling out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. He would be the one that invited folks from all over the Judean hillsides and country to come and be baptized. But that he was not worthy of the one yet to come, he would say. That the one coming would baptize us with fire and the Holy Spirit. And so we've got to prepare for it. He called on us to repent to make way for Jesus and to be prepared for him to turn our world upside down, a world where valleys are going to be made full and where mountains will come down, an upside down experience that God is going to do in our midst. Scripture implies to us that even as a baby in Elizabeth's womb, the infant John could sense the the Messiah's presence within Mary when she came to visit jumping within his mother's womb, acknowledging that Jesus' presence was there. And so in a way, John's entire life was about preparing us for Jesus' coming, about laying a foundation. 
both for himself and others, to be able to really accept the peace of truly being at home in the presence of God that comes when we offer our lives to Christ. But you know, all that has happened over these last two years, home just doesn't seem like what it used to be, does it? And even though we often long to go back to home, the home that we used to know, the way things were before, similar to the Israelites reminiscing about the glory days of King David, we too do that. You know, the the before times, as one of my friends calls it, pre-COVID. But, you know, we now find ourselves instead in a season of creating something new, of laying a foundation for what home will look like for us into the future. And Advent comes in the midst of that to stir up within us a desire to to have a truly sense of home in our spirits, in all the right ways, to be a place where we are known and to have a home where we belong, a place where the goodness of family is found and chosen family is connected, a place where peace resides, where justice prevails, where Hope triumphs and keeps us going. So Advent comes as an invitation to prepare for that, to lay a foundation for a home that does not yet exist and yet has been working on us our whole lives. Advent reminds us not to be complacent then about the way things are right now, but instead to believe in something greater, that there is something more at work within us and within the season and within Jesus Christ yet to come that will enable home to become something new and to have faith in what lies just beyond what's visible is an invitation for us at advent and to answer john the Baptist's call to prepare for that and to lay a foundation that's ready to so that god might be able to enter into that place with us that is our invitation for advent that we might be able to work together to help create that place of home that God has in mind for all of us. So, you know, when you start thinking about a big project like building a home, you realize that laying a foundation and building something solid is a lot of work. It's not an easy, fun little weekend project. In fact, it's got challenges. There's usually a setback or two, and it can be painful to let go of the way things have been in order to create something new for the future. You know, when you watch HGTV, it's fun on demo day, right? When it's time to tear things down and you get the sledgehammers out and those other things like, yeah, 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 yeah. All of that is amazing to see, but it takes a lot of work to get up to that, that demolition and the building back of our own inner lives is a lot of work too. The demolition and building back of our traditions, the demolition and building back of community and even of church. All of that seems a little less exciting come to think about it. But Advent reminds us that even though the work of preparing the way and laying the foundation can be difficult, it can be a strain on us physically, mentally, spiritually, a blessing in it, a holiness in this work, where even in the midst of chaos, peace can still be found. Because in the invitation to lay a foundation, to prepare a way for God, we're given this opportunity to join in God's work of restoration and redemption in the world. We, we're given an opportunity to be real. And to share love in a way that can change us. And we pray we'll change the other in which we love. We're given this opportunity to pay attention and to really notice not just what we love about the ways of the past, but also how our future can be even better if we have the courage to build it. When John the Baptist called out, prepare the way of the Lord, he was calling for redemption and repentance and a change of direction. And he wasn't saying that it was time to go back 
home. So he was saying that we are called to a new home, a home where baptism invites us into a new relationship with God as members of the family of God. And it would change our direction in life in the course of history even. It was a fresh start for God's people, a chance to embrace something entirely new. Something God had never done before was about to take place. And Jesus was preparing the Israelites for that. Preparing us too. Because the foundations of the world were being shaken. The mountains would be brought low. The valleys would be made high. All through the person of Jesus Christ. John was saying that the path to a peaceful home that you seek is coming. And the house that you've been building right now may not be up to code right now. That's okay. But the home that God has envisioned for us is even better than we could have ever imagined for ourselves. And it may not be an easy road to get there, he says. But God is coming in the flesh and is going to help us build that better future together, brick by brick, every step of the way. So whatever chaos you are facing this holiday season, whatever you're facing at home, whatever longing is in your heart that you have for peace, whatever is ailing you or keeps you up at night, whatever challenges are in store that are keeping you from laying a new foundation, I pray that you will remember the promises of Advent as you leave this day, that That God has come and God is coming. That God's kingdom is present and available to us right now and is growing even larger than ever before from here on. And that through Christ, we are never alone. For God has come. Emmanuel means God is with us. And one of the ways that we get closer to home is by coming here again and again into the presence of God at the table for communion. It is a tangible way in which we experience the, the, and see and touch and taste and experience the reality of Jesus, the Emmanuel with us. And for me, it strengthens me for the road ahead. It gives me that nourishment, that spiritual food that I need to keep going about the day and the week, and it will help us press on as we strive to do our best to lay a foundation and prepare a way for God to come in this year, for God to enter our hearts and our lives, our church and this world in bold ways in the coming days. And so as you come today to the table, may you know the joy of coming home As you step out into the aisle or worshiping at home, may you feel a sense and presence of God and know that you are home in the best of sense. May you be strengthened enough to keep building on the home that God calls us to build here on earth, a home of peace and hope, a home of joy and love, so that our hearts live it out in ways that help the whole world to sing God's praise. So let us lay that foundation in the days to come. And we do all of that in the name of the one whose foundation we can trust in, Jesus Christ. Amen. So now we have an opportunity to respond to that invitation of preparing the way by singing that we want to walk in the light of Christ. As we stand for our hymn, it's found on page 206 in your hymnal. We'll sing verses 1 and 3.
may be seated. Let's return to the foundation of the faith, which is love, starting with love for ourselves. Let us pray the prayer of confession together. Holy God, when John was born, his father Zechariah breathed words of love into his ear. We know that you do the same for us day in and day out, yet we fail to hear it. When John the Baptist came proclaiming the coming of the Messiah, he promised of one who would baptize us with the Holy Spirit. We doubt that we are worthy of this promised coming. We doubt that we could possibly be enough. We hustle for our self-worth and wear ourselves out aiming for perfection. We deflect words of praise. We hide behind shiny first impressions. Forgive us. Trusting our worth is the hardest job. Open our ears as you open our hearts so that we might rest on the foundation of goodness you have laid for us. Gratefully, we pray. Amen. Family of faith, no matter how old we get, God continues to say to us, you are loved. You are forgiven. That is the foundation of our lives. That is the truth upon which we build our home. So breathe deeply. There is grace and peace here. Join me in proclaiming this good news. We are loved. We are forgiven. We are claimed. This is our foundation. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thanks, Pat. I'm going to invite people to remember to come forward now for just a moment of silence and I would like to play a game of all things together. We're going to hear a little bit more about our kitchen renovation and hear about how things are going and we head into the new year. So we welcome you, Susan, as our chair of the kitchen renovation team. Thanks. Thank you, Lane. Thank you. First thing I want to say is thank you. Thank you to everybody who supported the kitchen ministry. Um, we have reached several milestones in the past two, three weeks. We are over $100,000 of commitments and donations. So thank you. We are at 106,624. So fantastic. Just totally stunned on that one. Um, so where are we at? We've signed a contract in the last couple of weeks with Do My Construction. Um, their bid was one fifty nine eight eighty. Um, that doesn't include architecture fees and appliances. So our estimate for the total is about one seventy five. Um, the scope of that work is the full kitchen renovation that we planned and the ceiling in the pantry. Um, our schedule for next steps: uh, we have a subcontractor meeting this coming Wednesday to talk through construction. Um, and if our preliminary schedule looks like what they you know, see in terms of material availability and things like that. Um, we plan to pack up the kitchen the week of the 20th, and we plan to do the St. John's piece of the demo, which is the fun part, um, <laughs> the week of January 3rd. Um, all that in mind, hoping to have construction start the week of January 10th. So, so far we haven't heard of any material delays or anything like that. I think appliances may be a long lead item based on, you know, the, the other the freeze, the hurricanes, and things like that, but uh, we have the subcontract subcontractors looking at that for us as well. Um, once we get the kitchen construction started, we're going to be out of commission in the kitchen for about two to three months. Um, so the, our planning team is meeting next week to talk about what are some alternatives that we might have for coffee time and how we can manage that, and then other activities that we do use the FLC and, and how can we kind of function without a kitchen because we won't have water, we won't have power in there, things like that. Um, if you have any questions about the kitchen, you know, ask me, ask somebody on the committee. Um, but again, we could not get this far without everybody here and the support from folks. And we really are this close to starting on a renovation that's going to help us grow our ministries in this church. So thank you again.
And now I'm going to invite our ushers to come forward for this morning's offering time. This is a time in which you can bring a gift to God to offer your lives, also offer your prayers and your hopes for how you will invite God to help you lay a firm foundation in your own life. So as we do, let's pray together. Holy God, you are our home. You are our goodness. You are the place in which we long to return, the place we long to lay our head. And so today, as we offer you these gifts, we pray that you would take this offering and turn it into ministry. Take our gifts and change lives, transform the world, empower us to serve. Use these gifts to transform the world we live in to a better reflection of the home you have envisioned for us, a home of peace, a home built on a foundation of love. For we pray all this in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen.
family of God, there is always room in God's house, which is our true home. And likewise, there is always room at this table. As United Methodist churches around the world do, we here at St. John's also have an open communion table, which means that everyone is welcome, that you don't need to be a member here. You don't even have to hold particular beliefs that we have to come to this table, for we believe that as we pour out bread or we break bread and pour the juice and the Holy Spirit is with us, that this acts as a means of grace for us to receive that grace in our lives. So if you desire to be fed, please know that you are welcome to come to this table. Join us in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is a right and good and joyful thing to give thanks to you, O God. From the beginning of time, you have made your dwelling place with us, guiding us in the garden, going before and behind the children of Israel as they made their way out of Egypt, and making your home in your temple. Even when we were in exile, we trusted that you would eventually bring us home. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. You may be seated. In the fullness of time, you, O oh God, came to dwell with us taking on human flesh in the person of Jesus. You made your home among us. Jesus was born of human flesh, grew up in a family and a faith tradition, and eventually became to live out his divine calling in the world. He showed us what it means to be fully human, fully alive, and how to pursue your realm of justice and peace on earth. We carry on his work, knowing that your realm has yet to come. On the night before Jesus was betrayed into the hands of the empire, he was at table with the people whom he considered his home. As he pondered all that was to come, he took bread, gave you thanks, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat this, all of you. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper was finished, Jesus took the cup, gave you thanks, and gave it to them, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant. Whether, whenever you drink this, do it in remembrance of me. For as long as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the resurrection of our living Savior until he comes again. As we wait during this blessed rest known as the season of Advent, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna. Let's pray. Send your Holy Spirit now, O oh God, to bless these gifts of grape and grain, that they may be for us the sacrament of your new covenant through Jesus Christ, our Savior. 
Use us, too, to transform the world we live in to one that better reflects the home you have envisioned for us, a home of peace and a home built on the foundation of love. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forevermore. To me, when a prayer sounds like home, it sounds like the Lord's Prayer. So maybe you will hear it that way, too, as we pray together this prayer of Jesus. Our Father, Father who, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. And the cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. The gifts of God for us, the children of God. Thanks be to God. I want to remind you again that everyone is welcome to come home to God here at the table. And our ushers will direct you forward to come as you feel led uh, and know that you are going to come to receive a gift. And so as you come, place your hands open to receive and we will place a piece of the broken bread already dipped in the juice into your open hands. If you feel like you would rather have a cup of juice and bread on your own, that there are some at your left as well as a gluten-free option. And we pray that you will experience the presence of God yet again who is with us now.
Will you join me in the prayer after each reading? Oh God, thank you for making a home among us through the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit has renewed, refreshed, and sustained us in this meal by the presence of your love. Reveal to us in Jesus. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to be daily revelations of that love. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Pat. together. As we prepare to go out into the world, I want to share with you a few invitations as we move about the Advent season together. The first is an invitation for you to make someone's day. If you would like to have an opportunity to give gifts to some children who may not otherwise be able to have Christmas gifts in their home this year, we've got children that you can adopt, if you will. You can become their Christmas angel, and there are children from Wildwood Elementary School as well as the Gardier Christian School. School, and there'll be someone in the narthex as you're leaving who can sign you up to receive one of those kids and you get to go shopping with them or for them rather and get gifts for them to help them have a wonderful Christmas season. And another way you can make somebody's Christmas, uh, specifically the church staff, is you may want to consider making a gift to the love offering that we're taking for the church staff for all the work that they do year round. We do thank you for that gift as well. I want to invite everyone to come back to church this afternoon. We're going to have our Advent Fest that's coming up at 4 o'clock. We're going to begin right here in the sanctuary. We're going to sing some Christmas carols. We'll be visited by a special gentleman wearing red. He has a white beard. He will escort us over to the Family Life Center where we'll have some crafts for kids. There'll be snacks for everyone. And then we're going to have a bonfire outside. Yeah, that's cool, right? I think it'll be cool. We're going to roast marshmallows too and so come on out for a night of festive uh, holiday cheer at four o'clock we'll be done by 5 30 for sure and it'll be a really great way to kick off the advent season if you don't quite feel like you're in that season of preparation just yet I also want to tell you about what's happening next Sunday morning. During worship next Sunday, we will once again hear the beautiful music written by our very own Terry Byers as we share in the cantata he wrote last year called The Song of the Shepherd. And he wrote this with COVID in mind, with singers singing individual solos and individual voices, sharing a beautiful story, the story we know, the greatest story ever told. And I hope that you'll come out next Sunday for worship. We'll do it at both services at 8 30 and 11 it's a great service to invite a neighbor or friend to uh, I won't be preaching we won't put a big push in you know and so it'll be a chance for them to just kind of come get a feel for what church is like and and here's some awesome music in the midst of that too so that'll be on Sunday during worship and then between services and right after worship as well our United Methodist women are going to be hosting a crafts and bake sale in the Family Life Center and they're raising money for local missions in the Louisiana Louisiana area that they support and that are a part of our United Methodist Connection. And so come out next Sunday between services, also right after worship. If there's anything left, they'll be reopening, and there'll be lots of great things you could pick up for holiday gifts and also treats to eat that, that day or, you know, save them if you want to for Christmas or come bring them to my office and we'll eat them together because it's good stuff. I also want to remind you about our great turkey giveaway that's coming up on Saturday, December 18th. We're going to feed over 500 people that day by giving them a full holiday meal, all the fixings to prepare at their own home, including a turkey and all of the different items that you serve along with it and a dessert and homemade bread as well. And so we'd love for you to come and help us on that Saturday to get uh, our, welcome our neighbors in for that great day of giving. In fact, there are some loaves of bread still left in the narthex that are for you to take home and freeze. If you have a little bit of freezer space, we encourage you to take a loaf of bread or one of the sacks that has multiple loaves in it and put it in your freezer and don't eat any of it. I did that my first year here and is frowned upon. 
we got to save it for the great turkey giveaway. Bring it back on Friday, December 17th. We'll be here all day ready to receive that bread. Dwayne Craig has baked all of this bread himself at homemade at home. And uh, he, these breads represent all. way there you know so keep it up the good work and thank you for babysitting that bread for us we appreciate it don't forget to bring it back in the freezer for the next few weeks right after that big weekend we really round the corner on the week of Christmas though and so I want to invite you to two different worship opportunities the first is the longest night service that will be held on the evening of December 19th it is a night um, in which we remember that there are those among us who this may not be the most wonderful time of the year and they are grieving or experiencing a sense of depression or loss and this is a service for you if that hits close to home for you then I invite you to put that on your calendar and plan to be here for that quiet meditative service on that evening at five o'clock we'll then worship again later in the week on Christmas Eve at five o'clock as well it'll be one service this year here in the sanctuary at five intergenerational with lots of different music and wonderful ways for us to celebrate in the birth of Christ and one of the ways that we're going to get ready for Christmas Eve and for the new year is that our chancel choir is going to resume rehearsals. And so Steve Rushing is inviting anyone who would like to come make a joyful noise or sing in tune with us to come join him on this Wednesday and the Wednesdays to follow at 7 o'clock in our choir room, which is next door and he wants to get to know you and welcome you in and also make merry music together and so i hope that you'll take him up on that offer that anyone's welcome right yes yes indeed including you so please do come check it out if there's an inkling or an interest within you to make music with us in the coming weeks he'll also talk about ways in which we can do that safely during this season of covid and we are already looking for ways of how we will do that together. So know that that is important to us. We're keeping all of that in mind as well. Well, as we prepare to go this morning, I hope you'll take your bulletin home so you can keep up with everything that's going on this week. And I see that we've got some folks ready to bring groceries forward that we're going to give to the Shepherd's Market. They will come up during our final hymn and we'll pray a blessing over them. But also during our song, if there's anyone here this day who desires to unite with our church family, become a member of St. John's, or speak to me about what it means to follow Christ and live it out here at St. John's, come up during the singing of this final song, or reach out to me this week, and let's talk, and we can find out more about one another as we live on this journey together. And now let's stand, friends, as we share in Hail to the Lord's Anointed, 203. Thank you for these donations for the Shepherd's Market Food Pantry. Know that this gift makes a difference. It matters for our friends and neighbors who come and be a part of our ministry here at St. John's. Let me pray a prayer of blessings upon them and as the light of Christ brings us out into the world. Holy God, we pray your blessings upon these groceries and upon the lives that will receive them. 
help them see the gift of Christ and the gift of food. And may we continue to find ways to be your hands and feet in the world. That as we leave this service, we realize that it is now that our service begins. That wherever there is a need, we will intercede. That when one comes hungry, we will find a way to feed, both spiritually and physically. And that whenever we lean on one another, we will lean right back and know that we are in this journey and this life together with you. And may the God who is with us at the beginning of life be with you now as you go in peace with hearts full of hope. Amen. Amen. Thank you.